David, you ready? We're done? Okay. okay, let's get started. This is the November 21st session of the Baltimore Municipal and Zoning Appeals Board. Um, generally, we're going to hear cases uh, in the order that they appear on the docket. Uh, we've got a couple of preliminary matters, at least one preliminary matter. The case has been postponed, and that case is case number 2017-369-2020 East 31st Street. Uh, if anyone is here for that case, uh, please make sure uh, we have your name and contact information so we can contact you if and when that case is rescheduled. So is there anyone else in opposition to a case today that has not signed in? If you are in opposition, uh, please come up and Derek is holding the sign-in sheet. Please sign it. Um, we'll start off today by if, if anyone has any cell phones or other devices that make any sort of noise or, or ringing tone, please turn them off um, as these proceedings are being recorded, as you can see from the various cameras up here and over here and also it interferes with our court reporter. Um, generally, when we call your case, uh, come up to us and the appellant will be to my left and anyone in opposition will be to my right. The procedure will be that we will hear from the appellant first. The person in opposition or the group in opposition will have the opportunity then to state their position and the applicant uh, will then uh, the the applicant will then uh, close and that will be the end of the case and we will make decisions on our cases at the end of the day uh, if you want to call to hear the decision you can call tomorrow at the uh, mr tanner's office and that number is 410-396-4301 uh, and i'll give that to you one more time 410-396-4301 and Mr. Tanner tomorrow can give you our decision. Also, as I said, if you want to hang around this evening, you can hear, uh, we will reach a decision tonight on, on virtually all the cases, I would hope. Um, but please do not build in the city of Baltimore or make any improvements without having proper permits, which starts here. You will notice that we have three members today. Um, two of our members have been unavoidably detained. They will be here, we hope, uh, but they are not here now. And what that means is uh, you have to have a unanimous decision by the three of us to uphold your zoning appeal. So because of that, if anyone here would like to postpone their case, we will certainly postpone that case until we have a full board. So if anyone would like to postpone today because of the, uh, the fact that there's only three of us, uh, please let me know or please come up and let uh, Derek know. Um, we have uh, two cases here for which opposition has signed in. Uh, one is 2017-413, 2000 East Baltimore Street, and the other case is 2017-417, 227 East Biddle Street. And I see Mr. Prattle is talking to us. Is Mr. Prattle, are you, are you postponing? Yes, I think with due to the opposition on 2000 East Baltimore Street, Okay, who's here, who's here in opposition to that? Because of the three of us, we're fairly liberal with postponements uh, in these situations, so we will postpone your case. Um, next case for which there's opposition is 227 East Biddle Street. Who's here for that case? I'll call it one more time. Oh, they're talking. Oh, they're talking. Okay, good. Okay. No. So we have a number of cases uh, which are on our consent docket, and that's a doc. And what that means is uh, zoning board staff has reviewed those cases, and generally we have sufficient information in those cases. So I'm going to call all the cases uh, that are on our consent docket. I will ask you to line up starting here with the first case called and line up to my left. We will get you all sworn in, and then we'll hear each one of you, each one of those cases individually. So the first case on the consent docket is 2017-414-1916 East Pratt Street, Tom McClary. Come on up. The next case is 2017-418-500 South Lakewood Avenue, Andrew Lair. 
The next case is 2017-419-1175 Sargent Street, Tamir Asat. I'm sorry, that, I'm sorry, that's not a consent case. My, my apologies, I called the wrong case. Uh, next case on the consent docket is 2017-421-4116 Ford Lee Road, Daniel Rihani. Come on up. Next is 2017-422-713 South Clinton Street, David Pfeiffer. Okay. Next is 2017-424-4807 Williston Street, Albert Harrison. And finally, uh, the next case is 2017-432-818 South East Avenue. Brian Chance. Okay, let me get you all sworn in. Uh, raise your right hands, please. Do you swear do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And when we call your case, stand up and if you wouldn't mind, speak directly into the mics. That helps us with the recording and the, um, as you can see from the, the, the live broadcast that we're on Charm TV. Uh, okay, so first case is 2017-414-916 East Pratt Street, Tom McCleary. Um, good afternoon. I'm Martin Adams. I'm the owner of the property. Um, we are looking to, we have at the rear of the house, um, a carriage house, two-story carriage house with... Uh, the lower part is a garage and the upper floor is an office space. Uh, they're currently, we're looking to put a roof deck on top of the garage with bridges to connect the office space to the main house and the, um, the roof deck off the garage to the main house. Um, okay. The main house has doorways pre-existing that would connect to those roofs, uh, those bridges. Thank you. Any staff reports? You, what was your first name real quick? Martin. Martin French for the Baltimore City Department of Planning. Planning Department has no comment on this application. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Cleary, the Zoning Board staff, we have sufficient information to approve your appeal. Thank you very, Thank much. You very much. Next case, the 2017-418-500 South Lakewood Avenue, Andrew Lair. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Mr. Prettle, could you state your name for the record, please? Uh, Nate Prettle uh, from AB Associates. I'm here on behalf of Andrew Lair. Okay. Any staff reports? P Planning Department has no comment on this application. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Proud, do you want to tell us a little bit about your property or your proposal here? Sure. It's for a small um, two-floor rear addition. There's a portion of the first floor that's being demolished, being rebuilt, and the second floor is going to be built out to match the first floor. And there was a um, interested party here earlier who had some questions about the construction timeline and her party wall but not anything relevant to the zoning aspect and I, sh I think she's on the phone with the developer right now and it sounds like they're going to uh, be able to work things out going forward in terms of uh, the construction. Okay, very good. Zoning board having reviewed your appeal, we have sufficient information to approve your appeal. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next case is 2017-421-4116 uh, Ford Lee Road, Daniel Rehani. Hi, my name is Daniel Rehani. I'm proposing the addition back of the house on 4116 Ford Lee. Okay. Uh, the four bedroom and the bathroom. Okay, very good. Staff reports? Planning department has no comment on this application. Thank you. Have zoning board staff having reviewed your appeal, we have sufficient information to approve your appeal. Thank you very much. 2017-422-713 South Clinton Street, David Pfeiffer. Yes, how you doing? I'm David Good. Pfeiffer. Uh, yeah, we'd like to uh, modernize the house and also uh, gain a little bit more space by adding the rear addition and a rooftop deck. All right, thank you. Any staff reports? Planning Department has no comment on this application. Thank you. Right. Having re Sony Board having reviewed your appeal, we have sufficient information to approve your appeal. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, 2017 424 4807 Williston Street, Albert Harrison. I'm Zacharias James for representing um, Albert Harrison. I'm sorry, can you say your name one more time? Zacharias James. Okay. Representing Albert Harrison. Right. We'd like to put um, a sunroom in the rear of the building 
um, and we, I think we were shy four feet in terms of the setback. But there is an existing deck there, and we would like to go to the 15 feet of the deck instead of the 11. Okay, thank you. Any staff reports? Planning Department has no comment on this application. Thank you. Zoning Board staff having reviewed your appeal, we have sufficient information to approve your appeal. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> and finally, on the consent docket, case 2017-432-818 Southeast Avenue, Brian Chance. Um, my name's Mike Coster, representing Brian Chance. Okay, Mr. Coster, any uh, staff reports? Planning Department has no comment on this application. Thank Great. You. Zoning Board staff having reviewed your appeal, we have sufficient information to approve your appeal. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, 2017-417, 227 Biddle Street, Stephen Collins, are they still outside? Mr. Collins, is your opposition here? Yes, it is. All right, let's call the case. Come on up. All right, let's get you both sworn in. Raise your right hands, please. Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Do we have any staff reports on this case? The Department of Planning. Thank you. Planning Department reviewed this application, noted that this property is in the Mount Vernon District, which is a local historic district. All exterior changes, any additions, demolitions, or alterations are subject to review and approval by the Commission for Historical and Architectural Preservation. The applicant has been in contact with the staff of the Commission concerning this application. The Department recommends approval of the application subject to these conditions. First, that the applicant completes all exterior alterations and renovations in accordance with an authorization to proceed issued by the Commission for Historical and Architectural Preservation. And second, that the applicant obtains an exemption from parking requirements from the Director of Planning, as this property is an historic property. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Collins, in the event that we do approve your appeal, are those conditions acceptable to you? Yes, they are. Okay. So why don't you tell us uh, what you want to do with this property? Okay. Um, I purchased the property back in March. Uh, it's, it's existing four apartments and one space that's designated for office. Um, I went to zoning back in April and asked would it be possible to make that designated office space an apartment. And they said yes, that it was doable. And I proceeded through the, the plans and and so forth and got told I had to do engineered plans, did those. Uh, and I know it's not a justification, but this is why I'm gone down this road is that I was told that I could convert it to apartment space. And so I've gone through the building permit process, which was the plans were approved except for zoning sign off when I went back to them on October 23, I think it was. Then I found out that the zoning regs had changed and there was a requirement for additional parking space. Unfortunately, the, the lot is totally occupied by the building and, and there's no solution to that parking space, which is why I'm requesting the variance. Okay. Sir, state your name and tell us uh, your opposition. Philip Beatty. The fact that there is no parking, there's absolutely no parking in the neighborhood there's nothing available. Also, the trash cans sit on the city sidewalk. I do believe there's a city ordinance about trash cans on a city sidewalk nonstop. It, and there's just been trash nonstop. So the concern is the uh, too many apartments in the building for the trash cans and the fact that there's no parking. Okay. Would you like to respond to that? Uh, I have and will kept the sidewalk clean and the trash cans neat. He is correct. There's no actual space for the trash cans, again, because of the configuration of the building. But I will uh, try to work with CHAP in terms of making some kind of enclosure for the, for the trash cans that hopefully would be acceptable to them. 
what would have to be acceptable to them. Okay. Any questions from the board? No. no. Thank you both very much. Next case is 2017 419 1175 Sergeant Street, Tamir Esat. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, everyone who's going to testify, let's, let's get you sworn in. I raise your right hands. Please do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. I do. Okay. Any staff reports? The planning department reviewed this application, noted that this property is requesting a use which is a permitted use in this district, which is an R8 district. However, this use requires 3,000 square feet of lot area, and this lot only encloses approximately 1,540 square feet, which would require a variance of 49% of lot area. The amount of the lot area variance needed for approval is quite large in relation to the amount required by the zoning code. The variance may be granted if there is an unnecessary hardship or practical difficulty. And the department, as a comment, suggests that the applicant provide the board with information to show why a different property meeting zoning code standards would not be available for the proposed use or if there is a reasonable alternative to using the proposed location uh, in regard to off-street parking. The director of planning would be supportive of an exemption if it was uh, from the parking requirement if it was related to the use of the property they did not need variances to make the use approvable. However, this applicant is requesting variances and the director is letting it be known that this property may not qualify for the exemption under those circumstances. The department recommends disapproval of the application because the amount of lot area variance needed for approval is large and there may be alternative locations for the proposed use that would not require approval of a variance first. Thank okay. you. Mr. Zat, tell us, uh, why don't you tell us what you want to do, and then if you wouldn't mind, address the comments from the Planning Commission. Absolutely. Um, I'm an architect that was brought on to file this variance. The building had been um, leased in June, um, and the manage one of the ma management representatives is here to t speak about that process. Um, uh, it was filed without kind of uh, due diligence done on the zoning requirements for this type of use, and they received zoning um, disapprovals, notices on their door, and so now they're trying to rectify this uh, situation now. So the building is already occupied by uh, Pastor Hooper and his congregation. Um, so now it's a process of trying to see if it's even um, possible to move forward given that his lease is a 10-year term and he's trying to figure out a way with management to get that to happen. Um, obviously it's, for, as, as uh, Mr. French said, 49%. Um, under, which is obviously a large, I can see to you, um, request, um, plus the parking requirement. Um, Mr. Hooper is going to talk a little bit about, first, um, why this location is important at uh, this particular location. And um, Ms. Uh, uh, Christina here is going to talk about uh, parking and her uh, progress on getting some uh, community parking available off-site, be it at elementary schools, for when congregation does meet as it's not used on a daily basis uh, to its capacity. So she's trying to make um, available parking for those people. So Mr. Hooper, you want to talk about a little bit why this location is important and others aren't available? Good evening. I'm Apostle Clarence Hooper, Holy Ghost Deliverance Tabernacle Church. Uh, when I first came into that area, there was a lot of drug activities, cars stopping in the middle of the street, collecting drugs, kids was running up and down the road, trash everywhere. Uh, when I first came into the neighborhood, First thing I done was went to the drug dealer and I let them know I know what you're doing. I said, but right here is God's house. You respect God's house. Everything will be fine. Since we've been in that neighborhood, the drug dealers have removed the drugs from that corner. There is no more cars stopping in the middle of the streets. Kids feel safe. Uh, in June, we fed 125 people on the cookout uh, from the church. Uh, the neighborhood now is beginning to get clean. We now have, uh, next next Saturday, we're having um, a committee coming in with all the men and the women in the neighborhood, and we're going to start a drug rehab program. We're going to start a mentoring program 
for the children, and we're also is getting ready to do uh, family night and movie night for the children because there was nothing there to occupy for the children to keep them safe, keep them off the street. The church has been a positive role model for that area. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Christina Chaffman. I'm the property manager for Bay Properties. Um, absolutely. C H A F F M A N. <coughs> um, before Mr. Hooper took possession of the building, there was a tavern there. Unfortunately, there was a tragic, uh, violent incident after during a robbery. Um, and we felt that we would be best served and the neighborhood would be best served by removing said tavern and going to, to residential. Um, a former colleague of mine actually rented this facility to Mr. Hooper and his church back in June, as he said. Unfortunately, as you know, um, the proper permits were not set in place. Frankly, we could ask Mr. Hooper to move, but I feel we feel his church is bringing great things to the neighborhood, really helping the community out. And um, he has invested a lot on the inside and the outside of his church and with the community, and we feel he is best served by being allowed to remain there. We are doing, as you see, everything we can to get back in compliance. We understand the zoning laws are here for a reason, but in this case, we do feel that his neighborhood uh, is best served by having him there, keeping that organization. Um, I have been in discussions with the Southwest Baltimore Charter School. They do have a lot that they, they do not use on the weekend. I believe Mr. Hooper's congregation is only about 25 strong. Um, they say they can rent us out up to 50. And unfortunately, it's city, so it's taking a little longer than we had anticipated, but we're still negotiating it out with them. But I am very confident that we'll have a parking solution very, very soon. Are those emails that you can read? Okay. We can provide, we can provide uh, printed emails to show that correspondence is ongoing mm -hmm. and can update the zoning board when that does become more finite. And we have letters of support from members of the congregation that wish to see I didn't make copies, but these are they're physically written, old school. Um, so hopefully this will suffice. Would you like us to make these part of the record of this Please. hearing? Yes. All right, thank you. Um, so between trying to find parking accommodations, which the planning board accurately um, noted, and trying to, I mean, the lot itself isn't as important as the location where the lot is, obviously. It's about being at this particular neighborhood. Mr. Hooper was at a previous church off of North Gay Street. Um, that burnt down a couple years ago, so he's been looking for a neighborhood to reach and serve again. Um, he didn't touch on that, but that's something that I know from him. So that's kind of, that's our position, and we hope that the zoning board will s help favorably keep this building in its location. Great, thank you. Any questions from the board? No. No. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Next case is 2017-426, 5449 to 5453, Park Heights Avenue, Makamu Wayasa. And I apologize if I pronounced your name incorrectly. <laughs> let's get you, let's get you sworn in, please. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth? Do we have staff reports? Yes, planning department has reviewed this application, noted this property is in the Park Heights Urban Renewal Area where the urban renewal plan does not prohibit or further restrict this proposed use. The property itself has parking, uh, off-street parking in the front of the building. The applicant did not indicate what would be the number of instructors or students at any given time in the classroom that's proposed. And therefore, the department could not assess whether there would be sufficient parking provided for the proposed use. However, if the applicant is able to provide enough parking in front of the building, obviously the department has no objection to this application. The department recommends approval of this application be subject to the condition that the applicant will provide and continue to provide a sufficient number of on-site parking spaces to serve the driver education school. Thank you. Okay. So why don't you tell us what you want to do and if you wouldn't mind addressing the uh, comments made by the planning department. Yes, I do uh, for driving education, daytime for three, four classroom. 
behind the, we no need for parking for that the students coming by bus so your your class your your stu your driving school is not in it's only it's classroom only is that correct yes only the classroom so there's no cars involved with no 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 car for that okay and how many students that one the mv maximum three student but dependence on agari maybe 20 maybe 50 that one student now come at one time okay okay the application from the zoning administrator said two teachers and maximum 30 students the For 25? Yeah. So it's. The two space? It would be in two spaces. Yeah, and do you have two spaces? Two parking spaces? Parking space? Yeah. Yeah, two spaces, yes. Okay. All right. Any questions from the board? No. Thank you very much. You're This case is 2017-427-905 South Conkling Street, John Leparini. Good. Let me get you sworn in. I raise your hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Staff reports. Planning Department has no comment on this application. Thank you. Mr. Leparini, tell us what you want to do here. Uh, I'm proposing to move there with my my wife. Uh, we're planning to put a 20-foot addition on the second floor and a rooftop deck. Was there any, uh, Mr. Tanner, was there any opposition to this? No, I think I, uh, I thought there w had been, but uh, we did receive uh, a revised set of drawings that indicated they were moving the rooftop doghouse further towards the rear, is that correct? I think it moves, uh, Moving a couple of feet towards the rear, yes. Um, it looks like on this drawing it's going to be um, 10 feet from the front. Does that sound right? Yeah. That's, that's about right. So it's well within uh, 35 foot height requirement. Mm -hmm. And uh, probably should have been on the consent docket. Okay. <laughs> All right, any questions from the board? Thank you very much. Thank you all. And with that, we are off the record. Yeah, I had uh, I had community. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I mean, it, it sounds like the guy is doing a nice job for the community, but I, I, hear, I heard zero uh, justification for the variance in terms of the standard. Right. Yeah, the um, which one are you referring to? Sergeant. Four nineteen. Uh, the only um, issue was the fact that. It was previously a tavern, mm -hmm. which, um, in terms of parking, uh, is pretty much of a wash. Yeah. The um, variance, variances are different now under the new code. There's no 
maximum used to be for churches it was 50 percent under the old code mm -hmm. and this is 49 percent so um, I think it's close yeah I guess I, I, I guess I couldn't go for that the the other issue is we treat the parking requirements for churches differently in the new code. Um, it used to be based on seating capacity. Mm -hmm. okay. It's now based on the rated capacity of the building. We oh, wow. um, reached out to the fire department and sent them a copy of the plans. And they indicated that based on their calculations, the capacity would be 64 people. Mm -hmm which is really less than what mm -hmm. the tavern would have allowed. Okay. Um, so based on, I think, if it was approved, we would limit the capacity to not more than 64 people. Um, other than that, I don't have any other comments. Um, Anybody else want to talk to us? Not at all. Yeah, yeah I think I'm okay. Anything else? Nope. All right. Well, let's run them through then. 2017-369-2020 uh, East 31st Street was postponed. 2017-413-2000 uh, East Baltimore Street was postponed. 2017-414-1969-2020 uh, 2017 417 227 East Biddle Street. Uh, I am a yes subject to planning's conditions. Yes. Great. Yes. Uh, 2017 418 500 South Lakewood Avenue was consent. Uh, 2017 419 1175 Sargent Street. Uh, I am a yes subject to the, the capacity being not more than 64. Uh, People at the church? Yes. Yes. Agree. 64? Yeah. 2017 uh, 421, 4116 Ford Lee Avenue, consent for 2017 422, 713 South Clinton Street is consent. 2017 424, 4807 Williston Street was consent. 2017 426, 5449 to 5453 Park Heights Avenue. Uh, I am a yes with the proviso that there be two all street parking spaces. Yes, agree. Yes, with that condition. 2017 um, 427, 905 South Conklin Street. I'm a yes. Yes, yes. agree. For 2017 432, 818 East, South East Street I is a con was consent. And that is the end of the 3 o'clock docket. I have one question for 419. Is yeah. there do we need to address um, the parking at all? I mean, I know that they said that they were in negotiations with school nearby and they think they can provide the parking. Yeah, I mean, I guess does I that need to be. Yeah, I guess I would encourage them, but from t Mr. Tanner's point, that it was it was really it was a trade off with the right prior with the use. old tavern. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, put some encouraging <laughs> language in there. I should feel far. And we're off the record uh, until the five o'clock docket. No way they could get along. Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome everybody to the five o'clock docket of the Baltimore Municipal and Zoning Appeals Board. Uh, we only, as you can see, there's not a lot of people here today. There's only two cases scheduled for the five o'clock docket, so we'll move through this fairly quickly. Um, is anyone here in opposition to a case? It appears that no one here is in opposition. Um, we would ask everyone here to turn off any cell phones or other devices that make noise during the hearings because they interfere with the broadcast and the recording of these proceedings. 
We will uh, make our decision today on the cases, and uh, you can either wait while we make a decision tonight, or if you would rather go home and enjoy your evening, um, you can call the zoning board tomorrow, and I'll give you the phone number. It is 410-396-4301, and I'll read that again, and we can give it to you later on if you want, 410-396-4301. Um, as I said, we only have two cases here today, so we're just going to jump into it. Our first case, we have one case on our consent docket. That is 274-416-924 North Stricker Street, David Maloney. If you would come up, please. Let me get you sworn in. Raise your right hand, please. Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I'll do. And do we have staff reports on this case? Planning department has reviewed this application and has no objection. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Maloney, can you just give us a brief uh, description of what you want to do here? Uh, what I'm trying to do is basically convert uh, a previously used multifamily dwelling uh, building, row house, um, to a multifamily dwelling, three units. Okay. Um, it's currently zoned as a single family, but it's set up already as a three, three unit. Uh, apartment building okay zoning board staff having reviewed your appeal uh, we have sufficient information to approve your appeal so thank you very much okay thank you and you're welcome you're done okay this is good <laughs> <laughs> next case 2017 371 2824 green mount avenue lakeisha oliver Hi. Let's get you sworn in, please. Raise your right hand, please. Do you swear or affirm the testimony that you're about to give in this hearing will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay. Do we have staff reports? Well, basically, yes. We have the letter from the Greenmount Community Association. They actually submitted its dated October 5th for the prior to postponement. They were hoping to delay the hearing so that the applicant and the association could have an opportunity to arrive at a solution that is beneficial to all. Their primary concern about the advisability of placing a child care center in the 2400 block of Greenmount Avenue is it is an area that has had and continues to have significant behavior that we feel is inappropriate for young children to be exposed to. And then there's planning's report. Planning Department reviewed this application, noted that this is in fact a busy location in terms of traffic, uh, recommended that the applicant explore alternatives to creating a passenger loading zone in front of the property as that would be a rather difficult proposition given the parking situation along Greenmount Avenue or lack thereof. And in conversation with the applicant, uh, we believe she has come up with an alternative to having the parking subject to providing transportation for the children to and from this center. The department has no objection to this application. Okay. Uh, Ms. Oliver, why don't you uh, tell us what you want to do with this appeal, and if you wouldn't mind, address the points raised by the planning department as well. Okay. Um, I would like to do a daycare, just a small center from children ages 2 to 5 years of age. Um, I decided to provide transportation for those children to and from the center. Um, just something to add into my program, transportation. Is the uh, provision of transportation, is that the alternative that planning was speaking of to a drop-off zone? Yes. Okay, and how would you provide transportation? Okay, it would be two ways. Um, we can either do transportation to and from the home or to and from the school. There's two schools that's in that area. That's Margaret Brent Elementary and Dallas F. Nicholas. So um, I would meet the parent at the school to pick up the child, take it to the center, and then I would meet the parent at the school to drop the child off. Okay, okay. And part of your variance is for parking. Um, how many employees will you have? Three, including myself. Okay. So who's going to be doing the dropping off and the picking up? I will be doing the drop off and pick up. Okay. 
I'm assuming there's only two adults that are required for the number of kids that you're going to have. Yes. Okay. Were you able to meet with the community? Well, I went to a meeting on, um, it was just one of their regular meetings. I think it was um, October the 11th, I'm not really sure of the date, and we didn't have enough time to like sit down. I, I spoke with the um, president and we didn't have like enough time to like sit down for them to like hear my vision or what I have planned for that. And then um, I t talked to the treasurer and he was supposed to schedule a date for me, um, which is the reason why we had to propose, postpone the first date and I never heard anything back from them. They have not commented since the last hearing also. Okay. Um, where are you in the uh, licensing process um, um, for the daycare? Did, did you, did, were you planning to get zoning first and then start with the licensing, or yeah, have you started the licensing yeah, process? Yeah, the um, zoning is the first thing I have to take okay. care of. Okay. Okay. Any questions from the board? Do you own that building? No, but I have been. Um, I'm, I leased the building. I've been leasing it since June of this year 2017 so the building is really put together the the daycare is set we're just waiting for zone and fire and um office of child care to approve it so the letter from the community seems to suggest concerns about uh, uh concerns other than parking in the neighborhood safety mm -hmm. concerns do you have any such concerns? Um, no, I, I grew up in that neighborhood, number one, so I'm very familiar with the things and the people in that neighborhood. Number two, there are children, this is what I believe, there are children in that neighborhood who needs care. So regardless of the neighborhood that the children are in, I, I'm just here to provide quality care. And it, it's a need for, you know, you have parents there who's trying to get back to work, who's trying to go to school, and it's no child care there. You know, um, you might have a family daycare there, but it's not in the area to where so parents can leave their kids and not travel so far to go to daycare so that they can work or go to school or whatever they need to do. Okay. And what are your hours going to be? My hours are going to be from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And how many? 15, yeah. So this um, is a drawing that we have. Is, is this the entire space of the daycare where the kids would be and the staff would be? Yes. Okay. And the... I guess mainly the kids would be in the class. What's, what's referenced here is the classroom? Yeah, the first part of the building. Okay, and the class, it looks, I don't know what, how, how, what are the dimensions that you would guess of the classroom? Um, I think it's like 750 square footage. I'm not sure I did it. I did the math in the beginning, but I, okay. I don't remember. Okay. Okay, any other questions? No. Thank you very much. And that ends the five o'clock docket. We are off the record. <laughs>
Now, I don't know. There may be children that don't need it. They walk, the mm -hmm. parents can walk them to the daycare or whatever, but that would be the problem. So I don't know how many children out of the 15 would require that. But, uh, and I, you know, I guess we could condition the decision as the operator of the daycare would have to provide transportation as needed, something right. like that. It wouldn't be an issue until, or if somebody complained, then we'd get into an enforcement issue of right. it. But right. if it's in the resolution, I think we would have some mm -hmm. teeth into it. Um, it so. Or, or do we just say that we, assuming we were willing to approve it, approve it conditioned upon um, no drop-off occurring in the front on Greenmont yeah. Avenue? Yeah. Or pickups. Absolutely. Drop-off or pickup, I guess, yeah. Absolutely. Well, that's the important piece because it is such a busy yeah. mm -hmm. right. car to there. Right. <coughs> Mike, anything? Yeah, that that may be easier to enforce. The need is there. Mm -hmm. I want to find a way to approve it just because it, it serves the need. She's right. Uh, well, yeah. let's go with the right. new drop off or pick up. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sounds good to me. All right. So the 5 o'clock docket, first case 2017, 371, 2428 Greenmount Avenue. I'm a yes with the restriction uh, that there be no drop off or pickup um, in front of the building located at 2824 Greenmount Avenue. Agreed. 2428. 2420, yeah. <laughs> Agreed. And owner provides transportation as needed. I don't even have an issue with not making her provide the transportation yeah, I, as I, long as they're well not dropping off and picking up. Yeah, but you could go to 24, 26 and drop off based on how it needs. Or go around the corner. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> how do we say that? Oh, well, if you just say no drop off or pick up without regard to an address. I don't think that's going to work either because you may pull around a corner and for the state. I don't know the neighborhood. But you could say, I mean, you could you could be on specific Green and say on Greenmont, Greenmont Avenue. Avenue. Yeah. On Greenmont Avenue. Yeah. Okay. There's yeah. side streets there that you could definitely that you could. Do. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, that's what I don't want to. I don't want to put a complete right. ban on. Okay. So right. the whole point is we just want the kids getting out. Of, don't want them getting in and out on right. Greenmont Avenue. Right. right. So then the condition would be no pickup or drop up on Greenmont Avenue. Right. Okay. And I'm a yes to that. Agree. Yes. 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 2017 416 was consent. And we are finished. All right. Right. Oops, I'm late. <laughs> You're slipping, Frank. You're slipping. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're slipping. I told him 512. <laughs> <laughs> My whole evening shot now. <laughs>